Welcome to Truths, Proofs, and Firewater Reviews. I'm your host, Lindsay, and this is John, risking his liver to discover new whiskeys. We base our reviews on a 25-point scale, 5 for the smell, 10 for the taste, 5 for the finish, and a combined 5 for the bottle and look of the juice. Future John and Lindsay are here, breaking in before our new game, Peculiar Pours. Lindsay didn't like my name. It was double, double blind going off. Double, double oaked like Woodford, but she didn't like it. You want to go into what the game is? Okay, so we wrote this down because there's a lot of stuff going on. Bear with me. Um, so John thought this one up and John gets inside his own head while he's at work because he's bored, I guess. I don't know. I think a lot. I'm really busy at work. I don't know what he does. I think he just sits there and, like, throws pepperoni or something. I'm not sure. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, John came up with this idea, which I thought was really fun, that we both go into a liquor store separately. So, we both take off and go to a liquor store, and we have a category in mind. So, we pick a category before we leave, and it's Irish or Canadian or barrel proof or single barrel or anything um, rum or bourbon or Tennessee whiskey anything like that. This week we just did bourbon just yep. a flat out thing to start it to see how the game works. Just went. generic um, and then we come back and we blind each other on it so we taste what each other has and obviously we know what the other one has but what the thing with these are that we don't know what they are on top of the fact that we have to pick something we've never had before so that keeps it a little more mysterious too so a little flaw that i saw is we had clear glasses in this one i'll probably be ordering black glen cairns because mine was super dark and i could tell so it yeah. wasn't blind for me yeah or you but we're gonna score on our normal scale so it's gonna be 100 points possible for each of us and so then there's gonna be up to fit well so the price point is 50. over 50 for every dollar it's going to be minus a point under 50 for every dollar it's going to be at a point and then we have 50 more points so it'll be 300 total and our final 50 are going to be based upon the uniqueness of it so if it's hard to come by or it's easy to come by top shelf bottom shelf the look of it and everything that we know about it so just kind of the uniqueness of it and how alluring it is. That's 50 points. I think I'm going to break it down in the next video. Eventually. We'll just figure because it out. I thought it was just kind of boring. Maybe we'll do points for like cork pop. Let us know any suggestions. Let us know if you just want to try this for your own video. Just steal our idea. I don't mind at all. Yeah. I like to see different stuff, not just blind reviews out there. So here's to Peculiar Pours. You want to close your eyes while I pop my whiskey and pour it? Pop my yeah. bourbon. We're doing a bourbon this week. Didn't get any, um, what is it called? I didn't give any details, so anything with the word bourbon on the label. Could say finished, it could say whatever it wants, as long as it says bourbon. Jeez. Do I get points for the pop? Mm, we'll talk about it. And then after we pour, we'll mix them up and do it as blind as possible. I open my eyes yet? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's dark. It is dark. Hopefully yours is dark so it makes it look mm. like... I is think yours dark? Is that dark? Oh, Maybe. Right. We'll see. Here we go. No peeking. You already tried to open the bag. I did not. Oh, well, yeah, mine's dark too. So we each took a separate trip to a liquor store. We don't know where each other went yet. And we don't know how much each other paid or any details. That did not sound like plastic. <laughs> Trying to get any. Ooh, that was not a good cork pop. Ooh, this is a. Mm, I like mm. this cork. Nice. Sounds like there's like a metal or something on the label. Oh, boop. What was that? <laughs> uh, oh, my. Uh, mm. eh, maybe. I guess we'll I see. have no idea what that could mean. <laughs> Did you get any hints off my pour and pop? No. I have an idea of what I think it might be, but really? I don't know. Okay, I'm at that. All right. Oof, I'm darker. You are darker. So it is not going to be blind, but we are going to be as honest. 
fast as possible. Take a break and gather my nose because I'm slow. He is slow. All right. I am stumped by yours and mine did not taste like I thought it would. Hmm. Yeah. I was impressed by mine. So, I think it's what I thought it was, it was going to be. It was good. So, yeah. which one do you, who do you want to go first? Rock, paper, scissors. Ha! I go first. Okay. So, for mine. You're going to go on yours. Um, do you want to just go through our notes? Yes. Okay. And then I'll go through mine. So, for my notes, I just put, uh, the nose is really nice. It's very sweet apple. A little bit of floral notes, kind of corny, so I thought maybe a little bit young. Um, vanilla and caramel a little bit, and it's kind of creamy to me. It's a very sweet nose, but in a very great way. It's not overly sweet. So I was happy with it. I gave it a four out of five. Um, the taste is kind of spicy to start off. It kind of tingled my lips. Again, this is my first drink of the night, so it might be that too, but um, it was still kind of peppery. Not not like super peppery but it was kind of peppery um there's a really bold cherry note to me um it was very predominant there was a little bit of vanilla some spice i got a tad bit of oak but not a lot there wasn't like a like overpowering amount like you want to see um but i was here for it that cherry was really nice and i thought it was kind of refreshing to have something so bold um, but that peppery bite kind of rounded it out really well. So it was nice. I gave it an eight and a half. Um, the finish was very charry cherry. Say that five times fast. Um, it lingered around, but it turned slightly medicinal, but in a good way. It wasn't like, look like cough syrup. It was just kind of turned a little more florally medicinally for me as it lingered a little bit and the charry tannikiness kind of came in. Um, not anything terrible, but if that wasn't, that medicinal wouldn't come through, I probably would have given this finished full point. I but... took that medicinal for a different, no, but I'll go into that. Okay. That. That's weird. Um, so I gave it a four out of five. The look, it's like a mahogany amber. It's dark-ish, but not super dark. Um, it has a really nice hue to it. And it has runny legs. There's a nice bead line and its legs just kind of run and just keep going. Um, so I gave it a two out of two and a half and I'll show you the bottle, but I rated the bottle a two because there's a few things I would change on it, but overall I think it's a pretty solid bottle. So my total for mine is 82 out of a hundred. All right. So there's that for yours. Okay. I'll go you wanna... into yours first. Okay. Then you're going to have to reveal it to me. Oh. Is it this one? Yeah. So I got a fruitiness, like a a candy fruit, like strawberry, maybe cherry, mm -hmm. but I got it like in a pixie dust, pixie stick. Pixie dust. Pixie <laughs> stick. It's like dusty, sugary, <laughs> but it has that fruitiness in there. Okay. It's well balanced. I like have a little sweet oak in there. There's a slight alcohol tingle that leads to a little bit of floral. I got like nice vanilla squares, vanilla oh, yeah, caramel Oh yeah, your squares. vanilla caramels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a little honey in there too. Man, I, it's really good. I like it. I give it a 4.25. You going to keep track of this? This is what confused me. I got candy cinnamon right away. Okay. A little bit of that corniness, that youngness, but it tastes really, really good on this one. It's got a light, sweet oak, and it all balances so well. There's some spicy black pepper in there, um, a charriness. Has Were a you unique... copying my notes? No, I wasn't. I wasn't even buying them. <laughs> Has a unique, like, sugariness, sweetness to it, not like candy. Not like a um, confection candy, what is that called? Like caramel, butterscotch, toffee, it's not like that. It's more like a rock candy or like a sucker. Okay, so just like a sugary sweet. Um, I get a little anise in there too. Not anise. Well, I, I get like that medicinal, I get like 
anus or whorehound lightly. I don't know which one. I can see that. So that whorehound has like a little honey in it too. I think that's what I would lean toward. I really like it. I give it an 8.5. Finish is surprisingly long and sweet. I love the mouthfeel on it. It's like oily. It's making my mouth salivate. I'm gonna hand it to you. You picked a good one. I don't know if you can beat me on my scores at least. Mm. The flavors just don't fade fast. No, they, they stick, stick around. around. It's a long mouthfeel. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about the bourbon you picked is the mouthfeel. I give that a 4.75. How about the look? The color's nice. It's like a, a dark honey. Legs, they look good. A little beady and they run. They kind of like jog down the glass. I'll say that. They don't run. I give it a 2. It's got a nice color. Okay. The bottle. So... I, I don't know what to guess. The corniness in it kind of leads me to something maybe Texas, but it has a spiciness that kind of reminded me of Four Roses, so I kind of lean in like Bullet too, but I have no idea. Well, you're way off base. Oh yeah? Yeah. So I just kept my mouth shut? Probably. I have no idea so, what that is. So this is 94 proof. 94. Yeah. It is triple pot still, not chill filtered, and... It is made here in Michigan. Pingree? Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Ooh, is that red label? Yeah. That's good. This is Mayor Pingree's mm. Bourbon Whiskey. This is from, produced by Valentine Distilling Company. We have gone into their history um, quite a bit extensively. We do have a Dusty of their Woodward. Um, I can't reach it, but it's yeah. right there. So it's from their some of their first bottlings, which I'm excited. Yeah, about. It has so, a cork in it. That it's a black synthetic cork. Yes. Um, that is good. We have been eyeballing Pingree forever, and we just don't ever pull the trigger on it. And I was like, you know what? I've seen good reviews on it. it, it like it's got to be good, and eventually we just need to pull the trigger on it and just try the dang thing and see what it's like. And then John came to me with this idea, and I'm like, "This is my bottle." So this is out of Ferndale, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Married with the finest Lawrenceburg, Indiana, distillate. So they're sourced. Well, they've always been sourced, but I didn't know that they. I think they blend their own stuff into it. I could be wrong. This is batch 20. Who knows? Oh man, I'll be keeping some of this around. Yeah. I actually really like this bottle. You, you got me some points on the bottle. I The only thing that gets me, this is a very unique bottle and I'm just not 110% sold on the shape of it. To be honest, not my favorite thing. I love, you guys know, I loved the etched glass. I don't know what this says on the side. The guy's last name is Valentine. Rafino? Rafino yeah. Valentine? That's the, the founder. Okay. So, I'm going to give the bottle a 2.25 because I actually really love that bottle. The shape is nice. The label's unique. 87. You rated it better than I did. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, John. I think you got me because my price is more than this one. So mine was 51 in some change after tax. So I stayed right around mm. that 50 mark. I was really excited when <laughs> this right. was there. So let's get through this. Okay, so give me your notes on my pick. On to yours. Um, I'm gonna just get this out of my face for a second. Um, so the smell was really fruity. It was kind of weird. Um, There's a certain fruit that I got on this. I couldn't quite get it. I cut apple and bubble gum. Um, very, very slight carameliness to it. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. I got bazooka bubble gum. Have you ever had my grandma's walnut banana bread? Oh, yeah. I could see that. Mm-hmm. She made, puts extra bananas in there uh -huh. and it's really moist and, oh my God. 
So That's what it reminded me of. I just, I got, I got a lot of like apple and cherry in it. And it was kind of weird to me because I was like, being, maybe my nose is tainted from the one I did. But I, I smell the apple and the cherry in it and I was here for it. Um, so I gave the smell a four out of five. The bubble gum kind of came through for me, which is really weird, I guess. I don't, it was like, it's like bazooka bubble gum. Like when you first bite into it, you start chewing on it and then all of a sudden it kind of goes away. It's kind of medicinally minty slightly, but really sweet like bubble gum should be. And that's kind of where I got. I can see where you're getting that. Got that from. Um, but it has a spiciness to it. It has a char to it. It's a little touch oaky and the taste kind of gave me a little bit of grape as weird as that is. I don't know. I was pulling some weird stuff out You've of this. You've been listening to the podcast. Because no. every time the Grease gets some oaky on it, he says it's grapey. Oh, well, maybe mm. it is grapey. I don't know. To a line. And it's kind of a little bit cherry. So those kind of dark succulent fruits I kind of got off of it. Um, but it's really nice. It's very mashed together very well. I will say both of these are very unique and very to their own but so odd but in such a good way and they are married together very very well um so i gave it an eight out of ten i wasn't super sold with the taste it was a little more peppery than pingree was so i knocked it down a half a point but um the finish was like a burnt aftertaste not bad but not like I don't know. It was just really charry and very, very uh, tannicky, bittery kind of little bit of spice. I didn't get like the fruit and stuff. Like it just kind of washed the fruitiness away and kind of left this charry in my mouth. So it's not like I was mad at it, but I was a little upset that it wasn't something a little bit more fruity like everything else was. So I gave it a three out of five. Um, the look You're is killing me. I'm sorry. <sighs> The look is really good. I I mean, it's nice and dark. It has really nice legs, a nice bead line. The viscosity of it is really nice. It swashes in that glass like perfect bourbon. Um, it's I mean, it's very pretty. It could be a touch darker. And that is dark. Though. I know it is dark, but other than that, I mean, I gave it a two out of two and a half just because. All right. You know. Well, for the reveal of my bottle, you're going to add that up while I... I already did. It's 17. 17 the before bottle. the bottle? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're killing me. I think you might be a little disappointed, too. Um, this is Old Forester Whiskey Row, 1910. You Old Fine Whiskey. This is one proof point lower than yours, but you couldn't tell because yours was spicy. Yeah. This is 93 proof. Fun fact, kids. Uh -oh. What's the fun fact? This was my second choice if I could not find Ooh. Pingree. I was going to get this for us. So it's really funny that you got this for us. I stayed with uh, the shelves while you were getting a haircut for a while. And I'm like, I don't want to spend that. But I think you love Old Forester. I, I love Old Forester. I love Oki. And this is double So barrel. this is the Old Fine Whiskey, which... In October of 1910, a fire caused the bottling line to be shut down for an indefinite period, which complicates stuff. And there was a vat of maturing whiskey waiting to be bottled, so they couldn't do anything with that. So what they did was they double barreled it, yeah. and then that was old fine whiskey back then. So they bottled this, recreated it. This is the standard old Forester, which has undergone... A second barreling in a lightly toasted, heavily charred barrel. There we go. That's where it is. They The second barrel is charred nearly to the point of incineration. So I heard Jackie Zycan on a podcast a while ago when this was released. Um, she said when they were getting the barrels ready, they were testing some barrels and they were charring it right to the point where they barely were together. So it was the deepest char you could get on a barrel. Hmm. That's how they match the flavor profile. 
That's interesting. Which, it it comes through on the palate for sure. You want to rate the bottle and stuff? I give the bottle full points. I love really? I love Old Forester's Whiskey Rose series. It's Their bottles are nice and elegant and sleek. And or, Old Forester's got it going for them with that kind of... I just... You, some people think that they're kind of bland and you know it yeah. is what it is but i think they're very clean and sophisticated with neat lines See, and i think their bottles are a little bland but yeah. their distillate always puts out puts for me. yeah i love so it i'm gonna go into mine so i got my grandma's banana bread with walnuts in it like crazy it has extra bananas everyone always says that about old forester and brown foreman products jack daniels i've never smelt it like this up until now it's got a very sweet oakiness on there. I have butterscotch and toffee. Um, what spice would you put in a banana bread? Nutmeg or something. Is it nutmeg? I don't. I'd say it's like a nutmeg in there. It has a spice. I get like a light apple butter on there. There's a light fruitiness of apple, but it's, it's dark. I actually almost thought this smell was perfect, but it's not. That's my favorite part of this one. I, I was like, I can't just give a perfect score on my own. I know which one it is, but I really do love it. I gave it a 4.75. So the palette is strong flavors of sweet oak. It's spicy. Black pepper, leather, char. Banana turned less sweet, sweet, almost sweet. like an underripe banana. Ugh. But I didn't mind it. It has this. a bitterness to it, like a, a slight coffee. Okay. There's a small amount of rye, but it is all over the whole tongue. It has a lot going on for what it is. I really love it. But the taste wasn't as good as the smell. I gave it an 8.25. It was good. It was almost great. I do love it. Maybe after it opens up. There's yeah, some things that we're a, a little, crack. We're a, a little ominous about. And then once they sit for a month or so, they start opening up. So maybe. So the finish is it's pretty long. It's not as long as yours, surprisingly. It's tannic. It's charry. It's bitter. There's leather. Um, a little of that apple butter and banana kind of stick around for a little while. I gave it a four because I do like the finish on that. Okay. How about the look? That it's is dark. Some dark. Man. It is dark. I have to say, in the bottle, it looks a lot darker than in the pour. The legs are just fantastic. Yeah. I'm going to give it full points on the color and legs. That's perfect to me. And bottle. Oh, I don't love the bottle. Um, I'm going to give it a 1.75. And I'm okay with a bottle being lower because their tastes always are good to me. So I rated yours higher. Yeah. Ugh. You rated and yours higher too? I rated mine higher and I was a lower price point. So that means the wind No, to we got to go into uniqueness and stuff. Ugh, stop. Out of so I'd give points. it to you and you would give it to me. Oh. Right. I'd say the bottle and the juice was very unique. I didn't never would have thought you would have gonna grab that. Didn't even yeah, that one never crossed my mind. Yeah, I know. I keep telling you to buy it and you keep saying that. I'm gonna give you thirty eight points on uniqueness. Okay. The price I think you could have gone a little bit lower because you didn't go over two. But I went way over. How much did you pay for that? 51 you 51 said? 51 and some After change. taxes? Yeah. So you got a minus a point for you for price. Okay, now you gotta rate me on uniqueness. Well, I mean, I love their bottles. I think that the the whole Whiskey Row line is just a unique concept that they came up with and I, I can appreciate it. Um, it is everywhere. You can find it. You couldn't for a while, it, and now you can it find it more spurts. and more. Um, I think that... 
it does get allocated every now yeah. and then. Yeah, Old Forester is getting a lot better with making it. You see this one a lot, a lot more, more often predominant. than when it did yeah. when it first came out. So, I mean, overall, as far as the uniqueness of it goes, I kind of thought it was kind of chuckled when you pulled it out because I was going to grab that too. And how funny would it have been if we both picked the same thing? Um, but it is a unique backstory to it. And I think that it's pretty badass that they're trying to recreate that. So, I mean, points. I'm going to say 40. Oh, I, I think. I just, probably because I'm a sucker for Old Forester, but... So, after tax, I paid... Where'd my receipt go? Who knows? I lost my receipt. Uh -oh. It was $61, so I lost... What? It was after tax. It was 59 oh. No, it was 60 John. It was 60 It was just under 60 So, I think he gave me a discount because I swear it was fifty nine ninety nine on the show. I think You're looking at the cheating. bank. I'm looking at the bank. I wish there was more money in there. <laughs> After buying a truck today, honey? Come on. Uh, okay, so, oh, mine was fifty two ninety six. So you so lost three points. I lost three points. We're going to round up for shits and grins here. Mine and was... yours was fifty nine thirty five. So I lost nine points? Yeah, we'll round down. All right. So what is the total score? Because we're actually pretty close. 1910 comes in at 194 between okay. the two of us. And Ice kind of killed me. Yeah. Pingree comes in at 206. So I'll beat you by a whole 12 points. Yeehaw! I win the first one. So. <laughs> All that trash talking and I. John's a sore loser. There um, you have it. There you have it. Leave a comment if you have tried this whiskey and let us know what you thought. Please like and share us to social media, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to leave a suggestion for our next review. Thanks for watching.